Hello everyone, it is the me, Game Penguin 21, and today, well, time to talk about Harmon Smith again. Seems like he is very up in arms about this whole Yuzu versus Nintendo thing, to the point where he made an entire video. Now, obviously, to those of you who may or may not know, emulation, uh, well, Yuzu itself is specifically an emulation software that emulates the Nintendo Switch console. Now, again, for those of you who are more living under a rock than anything else, emulation is basically taking a software and saying, hey, to this software that they're making the correct checks in order to play that software on other hardware that it was maybe not meant for, but also in the fact that it is just software that can be tricked into playing another hardware. If you've played any of, like, Atari flashbacks or a lot of the Sega, uh, like, the, the mini Genesis console or the mini NES console or Super NES console, like, bundles of, like, a bunch of their classic games, uh, on the mini console, yeah, you've played emulation. Now, again, what is Harmon's take on this? Well, of course, he thinks that Yuzu should be, of course, taken down because he is one of the very various people that think that emulation equates to piracy, and piracy is emulation. Like, the two are very interconnected, or very much the same thing. They are not. But I think, for the sake of this, emulation is talking about specifically the emulation hardware, but the software is the ROMs and things, or the read-only memories, that the emulation software does, which is where the actual problem lies. Now, uh, I think that that'll about do it for that. I'll give more of my opinion as the actual thing goes on. But to get the quick shilling out of the way, I'm looking to hit 1K by the end of the year. I know you're annoying of hearing that, but I'm going to keep mentioning it until I get that 1K subscribers. I know, I know, I know, but I love you all every single time I get more subscribers. You are awesome. Two, my new music, uh, O2, uh, for my Friday nights should be out by the time that this video comes out. I will probably link it in the description if the video is already out, but I will always link my band camp in the description so you can listen to my music anytime you want. And at number three, I stream a lot on weekends, set, usually Saturdays and Sundays are my main stream times. Uh, the time does change usually, so just check the Twitch whenever that's live. Anyway, let's get started here. A couple of days ago, Nintendo confirmed that they were filing a lawsuit against Nintendo Switch emulation, emulator Yuzu. And a lot of people threw up their hands and tried to tell you that, like, Nintendo can't do that. There is nothing wrong with emulation as long as you don't pirate the games, right? Like, it's just coping and seething, right? I've talked about this for a long time, but there's nothing legal about the current state of emulators, right? Shut up, bitch! Oh my god! Because in order to stay on top of the new releases, they have to ask for donations. In order to uh, it, get around uh, all the additional copyright protections, they have to they have to be on call like near constantly, you know, updating the software, right? In order to um Okay, so that long pause is a good place to stop. So he makes a lot of stupid and dumb points here. Now, what he is talking about in the current state of emulation is the fact that not everyone can get their hands on some of the ROMs, or the read-only memory software, in order to make the emulators work. Now, again, for this distinction of this video, emulation software entitles things like Yuzu, Retro Arcade, and those emulators that allow you to run the software of a read-only memory. Now, ROMs are the things that are actually the games and the software being redistributed, and those things tend to be in a kind of legal gray area. Now, is that good or is that bad? It's hard to say. But overall, for the sake of the example, Yuzu shouldn't really worry about this, or, well, they should, because if they lose, then that sets a very weird precedent and undoes a lot of different software, like, retroactively does so. Now, the amount of the case that Nintendo tends to have, at least in the majority of people that seems to do this, is because Yuzu is emulating current-gen consoles. Now, that's one of, if not the more, interesting parts, because for the most part, a lot of people tend to use older gen consoles that they can no longer get their hands on physical copies or, like, releases of those games. It's just 
one of the things that tends to happen with time and technology advancing as fast as it is. Now, does this mean that Nintendo can basically go up and say, hey, you zoo, stop doing this? Not really, because again, they wouldn't be doing this if they didn't have some other ulterior motive. Now, again, that main ulterior motive that a lot of people have had their tinfoil hats about, and I tend to agree, is to use Yuzu as an example to other types of creator, uh, creators of these types of content. And also, asking for donations to keep a software that you do in your free time up and running, like, that's not illegal. It's really not. Uh, if that was the case, uh, churches would be in very big trouble. In order to um, get a hold of these games, to play them on your emulators, like, you're going to have to pirate them, right? And these are all topics that everyone's just kind of, like, skirting around. Like, people just kind of refuse to admit it. It's why you see people, like, throw around terms like, legal emulation you know implying that they buy the games but like just don't play them on the original hardware right like uh they're they're desperately trying to like uh fool people into thinking that emulation is some like completely uh legal white zone where there's nothing wrong with it and that they're doing everything that they're uh they're supposed to do in order to play these games Yes, a lot of people do tend to do that. Now, I wouldn't say that emulation itself is a legal white zone, as it is a pretty gray area because of things like that. But the thing with copyright is, is that more or less, copyright has a lot of zones to it. I personally operate in that very interesting gray zone with creative... Uh, with a creative representation of how I like talk. So by doing commentary and stuff, using the videos on YouTube and using tweets off of Twitter and stuff like that, I am creatively taking all of those things and all of those elements, putting them in my own spin, and therefore I can make videos that don't get copyright claims. The same thing with my music. I can remix and redo specific samples and, you know, reuse those samples in different ways to be able to make music. I've gotten at least copyright claimed a couple of times on uh, my SoundCloud when I used to post a lot more there where they said, hey, this sounds very similar to this other song. Do you not have the actual, you, you don't actually have the rights to this? And I'm like, well, I actually do because here's the original file. I didn't actually reuse it. It might sound similar, but it's not the same file because I reused it. It's just the same sample that a lot of people tend to use. This happens in like, things like the music industry and stuff like that all the fucking time. It just kind of happens. On other hardware. Right. It's, it's been nothing but a cope and nothing but a seed. Right. The issue uh, up until now is that every single time like an emulator or a distributor gets taken down, typically what happens is that another one pops up. Right. Uh, you know, it's been happening for a long time. Right. But now uh, with Yuzu getting attacked, with, uh, with Nintendo going after Yuzu, uh, finally fi fi filing that lawsuit, you know, emphasizing how Yuzu drives piracy, how Tears of the Kingdom was a major driving force in getting people to support Yuzu, how, uh, how the company benefits from, uh, from major Nintendo releases, how, uh, how desperate people are in like shilling Yuzu online. Right. Like, uh, it's becoming more and more apparent to, uh, in the legal side of things, that the current state of emulators, you know, this idea that you can just play everything Nintendo releases on PC is not sustainable, right? It isn't rooted in reality at all. There's all these, there are all these legal issues involved with uh, getting Nintendo games on the PC to the point where, like, anybody who knows anything about the process, anybody who knows anything about it, like, they are well aware that what they're doing is illegal. And I think it is to a certain extent that uh, people like... That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. So what you said earlier of people buying the game, purchasing the game with their own money from Nintendo, taking the actual software off of the, the, the object that you get, that you paid for, that is your product, that you bought, all of that, and then taking it and then putting it onto and through the emulation software and onto wherever the fuck you else put it, yes, that is, quote, illegal in your eyes. It's not, it's perfectly legal, because you bought the product, and so long as you are not redistributing the actual software, you are using it for your own personal use, it is not illegal. It's the same thing as if I buy a water bottle, right? And I fill it up with water. But, let's say one day I don't fill it up with water because I want some Gatorade. So I take the Gatorade that I also purchased from the store, put it into my water bottle, put some ice in there because it wasn't really cold when I got it, and then go out for my run. 
is it illegal that I'm using a water bottle, a bottle that is designed to hold a liquid? Doesn't matter the liquid. It's just designed to be watertight and waterproof in some cases to, you know, hold the water. But I don't use water or anything else. And I use some other liquid that is not there and, you know, is also a product that I purchased. Like, that's kind of the same thing. It makes no fucking sense as to why you would go ahead and sue the water bottle company. Like, Gatorade go ahead and goes ahead and sues the water bottle company for saying, hey, you are not using our specifically branded Gatorade water bottle to, for this bottle, uh, for holding this, for holding our liquid. Therefore, we're going to sue the water bottle company so that way they go out of business and you can only use our water bottle for our Gatorade. Like, it makes no sense when you think about it in that context because it's stupid. Regardless of how you are holding the Gatorade or the fucking water, you are still holding it in two products that you did purchase. Now, regardless of the fact that emulation is also, like, open source software that you can just have that's for free, but it's the same principle. The water in the water bottle is the games slash ROMs that you are using for it. If you illegally obtained those ROMs, the water in the water bottle is the part that's illegal, not the actual water bottle itself. Just just kind of makes sense if you think about it that way. Is illegal. And I think it is, to a certain extent that uh, people like Mudahar, you know, who are coming out and like crying about this, they know that too, right? They know it's over, right? Um, once Yuzu is taken out, and I think it's safe to say that they will be taken out, That will open the floodgates to uh, Nintendo taking down other patrons, right? Other Patreons that that exist to uh, to take money from PC gamers who want to play Nintendo games, right? I can't tell if he's serious, and that's very concerning. And that's what people are scared of. They don't want that to happen because of the fact that it's stupid. It's dumb. Not only is there, again, legal precedent that they're completely undoing because of if they win, that is, but it, not only is there legal precedent that they are basically undoing and that has stood the test of time, you are basically saying that anyone can do this as well. And it's just stupid because, again, there are some that are out there that are not for profit that are probably more open source or something like that. And it's just like, again, to go back to the water bottle example... You're saying you, we can't make money off of the water bottle, even though it's a completely separate product that doesn't use any of the original shit. It doesn't use any of the branding. It just uses its own branding, its own set of, like, uh, of, like, regulations and shit. And you're like, no, you can't have this water bottle because it looks too similar to our fucking water bottle. Jesus Christ. Once that happens, uh, it's going to be more and more difficult for these people to get away with what they do, right? And uh, going forward, you won't be able to accept money, right? <laughs> going forward, there's going to be severe issues in in doing what you've been doing for the past couple of years, right? Because what you're doing is illegal. Stop it! The issue, I think, is that it hasn't really been demonstrated just uh, the current modern uh, like how modern how the modern pirate scene, pirating scheme uh, pirating scene affects uh, actual hardware right actual performance sales because a big cope for these people is that like oh we don't we don't affect hardware sales we don't affect anything oh if uh, Nintendo wanted to sell more hardware they should just make better hardware how is that not a good option? How is that not a good thing to do? If Nintendo wants to make a good amount of money, they should make products that people want to buy. Again, to go back to your uh, pre to go back to your words specifically, Nintendo has made one of the consoles that is the most sold out of any of the current gen consoles out of all of them, and it is the most underpowered. Why? Because Nintendo makes good shit. Nintendo makes pretty good quality products for the prices and for the performance that you get. The problem being is that if they want to create better and more business for themselves, they 
should make products that they are proud to put out into the market. That's how business fucking works. Why do you think the other consoles themselves continuously upgrade and continuously make sure that they are getting some of the best stuff that they can to appease to the most people that they can? That's how business fucking works, Harmon. If Nintendo wants to make a profit and they want to do it, you need to be able to adapt to a lot of the changing trends in the current market. That's how marketing and business works. You don't get that. And that's what a lot of these other people don't fucking understand when they're talking about this shit. Even, not just even Harmon. A lot of the fanboys and stuff that I talk about, they don't understand that a lot of what they are trying to do in terms of making a profit is to make sure that they are appeasing to the most and widest audience that they can. Nintendo has its own way of doing things. Xbox has its own way of doing things. PlayStation has its own way of doing things. And all of them do it distinctly differently, focusing on distinct aspects and quote-unquote niches, but are not really niches, to be able to appease those markets. That's how this shit works. Like, how is it impossible to conceive that Nintendo should get a Switch 2 out there? That Nintendo should try to make better hardware, maybe not the best hardware, but make the best hardware concurrently because the Switch is so outdated that it's just, it's harsh to even call it a current-gen car- console sometimes. It's very odd that you are saying that, oh, they should make this very good business decision to try to appease more customers. Why shouldn't they do that? Why shouldn't they go ahead and just make a new product for that? If those customers want more and better products. Why should they just sit on their laurels and do nothing and then just you give them money? Earn that money, goddammit. That's what I'm saying. That's a little rant here. Like, uh, again, it's just a cope and a seed, right? Uh, What I expect to happen going forward, uh, I do think that the big thing, um, as emulators become more and more cracked down on, as it becomes harder and harder to get hold of ROMs, as it becomes harder and harder to support people who are trying to build emulators, like, um, emulation is going to become more and more unviable. And it already is, right? Because you already, like, it's already commonly accepted that you can't download games off the internet, right? But now, now... And I think that's where we'll cut it off, because I'm only about halfway through this, and to be quite honest, that line just killed me. Not only can you just go and download games off the internet, you can also play games on the internet. It's what was called Flash games back in the day. They still exist, and they still kind of do it. But look, again... It's not just games downloading them off the internet, alright? If you are downloading illegal ROMs off the internet, that is piracy. Very distinctly different from just playing ROMs on emulation software. There is a big difference. One of the, the biggest things is that I actually went to my work at some point when I had a job. Um, it was a summer job, so I quit it a while ago. Uh, but I, they, on the computers that were there, there were actually emulators, and there was actually games that was on there. I don't know where they got those ROMs from, but they were like Game Boy Color and stuff like that. So, eh, whatever. In any case, that's, again, it's not illegal to use emulators and emulation software. It is illegal to redistribute ROMs, or redistribute illegal ROMs and, like, rips of games, technically. It's, like, that's the legal, ga- that's the legality argument here. So, it's, it's just, it's very weird. It's very odd. And I might edit some parts out. Oh, boy. This is gonna be very weird to edit. Anyway. I think that'll about do it for this video of I tell Harmon Smith to go and uh, get some brain cells, but he refuses to. In any case, my name is GamePenguin21. Again, like I said at the top of the video, 1k subscribers by the end of the year would really like and appreciate that uh, every day that you do that. Number two, my new single is out by the time this video is up. And number three, I do stream on the weekends, twitch.tv slash GamePenguin21. 
In any case, if you like what it is that I do, and again, want to support me, links to Bandcamp and everything down in the description below, like I said before. And, of course, all of you have a lovely, beautiful, great day, and I hope that you all find happiness. My name is Game Tangle One, like I said several times here. Harmon, get some new material, and a peace. Off.